going between uh, 8 and 11 miles an hour. Over 10, 10, 11, 11, 4, 10, 9, 4, 10, 5. Pretty steady. There's zero degrees deflection. previous limit was about 15, 16 degrees of deflection. You can watch the uh, inboard or outboard telltales and you'll see them separate. Uh, the, tel the tufts on the, uh, the lump should stay fairly well attached for at least three quarters of the cord of the elevon. And we'll go, there's, there's about 10 degrees of deflection. Everything's still fine all along the elevon. Here's 15, 16, 17, 16, 15. There's 15 degrees of deflection. We're seeing significant separation inboard on the inboard portion of the elevon. Even this tuft out here at the tip is exhibiting a significant separation event already. Uh, the flow is separating at about 50% of the core to the elevon. You'll note that the, uh, the tufts on the lump are, are in the turbulent boundary layer, but they're staying attached for the most part. So we're getting an attachment back to about three quarters of the elevator, if not more. Let's take it to 20. I have this elevon set up. It's limited to about 22 degrees of deflection. There's 20. And we see we have almost complete separation inboard and the tufts on the lump are still attached. So significant separation inboard. The lump is functioning and the flow is staying relatively well attached. And that's at 20 degrees of deflection, which is significant. And we let the elevon go all the way here. Now we're at 24 degrees, 23, 23 and a half. And we have almost complete separation inboard and we're separating at about the peak of the lump on the elevon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the amount of curvature in the lump and see what the minimum is that we can get away with to keep the flow attached. But there we're sitting at 23 and a half degrees and the flow is attached for at the lump for about half of the cord of the elevon, which is as good as you get on the swift. And inboard we're essentially completely separated. Outboard, almost all separated. We're, we have flow attached maybe up to here, and after that it's separated. But at, uh, at the lump, we're attached essentially up to the peak. So we'll shut down here for a second and uh, reconfigure the, uh, the lump. Here we're testing uh, without the lump installed. There we are at zero degrees, flows attached. We set the, uh, what's going on over here. So there's zero. There's 16 degrees, and we're starting to see a little bit of separation. That was its previous limit. Not too bad there at 15. We take it to tw 20. There's 20 degrees and we're seeing significant separation occur at about 50% of the core to the elevon. Worse inboard than outboard. There's 20 degrees right there. We've got significant separation. And let's take it all the way to the, there's 20, 26 degrees. Let's see if that's set correct. Let's see, are we still at zero here? We're essentially at zero, close enough. Yeah. Let's drop her all the way down. There's 25 degrees down Elevon. We see completely separated flow everywhere. Distinctly different than when the lump was in place. So the lump is a significant improvement. Here, the wind has died a little. We're down around seven, eight miles an hour. We had a lot of fog roll in. Might pick up in a bit. There's nine miles an hour, eight, seven. Eight, eight and a half, ten. So a little gust coming through. So here you can see that I've significantly 
uh, reduced both the uh, height and the cord of the lump. And we got one tuft that's hung up on a leading edge. Let me throw some tape on that. There we go, that should be better. So there, let's get this set up now. Here's zero, throw this guy out. And let's just take her all the way down to the maximum and see what we get. There's 26 degrees of deflection. We have complete separation out here at the tip and inboard, but we're still somewhat attached on the lump, still doing okay. So if we bring it back up to say, 22, which is uh, the mechanical limit that I'm setting up. There's 20, 21, there's 22. Well, that's not bad. That looks a lot like what I saw on the Swift when I had some tufts on that. We have significant separation inboard at 22, but pretty well attached on the lump. So the lump doesn't need to be as large or as much of the cord as I had the, on the first one. Uh, and now it becomes the question is, how small can you make it and still have it work? And we're, we're doing pretty good here. There's 20 degrees and it's staying pretty well attached. So that's fairly impressive. It's separating out here at the tip. Let's see, there's 22. Let's wait for a little gust to come through here if I can hold it steady at 22. And we're staying relatively attached over the lump and definitely detached inboard. So, big improvement. Now, that means that I'll maintain linear control throughout the full range of control surface deflections, but we still don't know if I'm going to have enough control power, enough roll rate, and that'll be determined uh, next time I go fly it. And now it becomes a question whether I take it back to Marina and do some short hops there, or whether we just head straight for El Mirage and try to uh, But of course, in the meantime, before we go out again, I have to make a set of these, left and right. I'll probably make them a lot like what we see here, out towards the tip, where they're about three quarters of the cord of the elevator. And I'll probably cut them out of foam and uh, uh, put some uh, lightweight covering on it and, and just have them be foam stuck on top of the elevator. I, I don't think there's any need for fiberglass if that's just going to add a lot of weight. So there we go. I think we have uh, at least a temporary fix. Uh, short of cutting up the uh, wingtips and extending the elements. And uh, thanks for watching. Fly safe. Bye for now.